In this video lecture, we're going to start looking at the immune system. Before we get into the innate immune system, though, I want to give an overview of the immune system. And that's going to include the lines of defense. Think of this as a war. Our immune system are our soldiers. The pathogens we're fighting is the enemy. And so we've got different lines of defense to deal with this enemy. Then we'll look at some of the properties of the immune system. And last, we'll look at the lymphatic system and see its role in um, the immune system. So first, the lines of defense. The first line of defense is our physical barriers. Think of this as the castle wall or the um, border of our country. Um, we don't want the bad guys in, so we're going to keep them at bay. And we have physical barriers to do that, like skin, mucus, stomach acids, to keep those pathogens out. If they manage to get in, then our second line of defense is going to work. And this is going to be the innate immune system. The innate immune system is also called the nonspecific immune system or nonspecific immune response. It's nonspecific because the components of this system work just the same on any enemy that it faces. Doesn't matter who it is, these soldiers are just going to fight the enemy the same way. The third line of defense is going to come in as the adaptive immune system or the specific immune response. These guys, think of these as our Navy SEALs. These are specialists. There's a, uh, one group of Navy SEALs that are really good at fighting, say, Al-Qaeda. But there's another group of Navy SEALs that are really good at fighting ISIS and so forth. Um, that's kind of how our adaptive immune system or, or specific immune system works. There's a group of T cells that are good at fighting staph, but they stink at strep and E. coli. There's another group of T cells that are good at fighting um, E. coli, but they stink at strep and staph. And then there's a third one that's good at fighting staph, but stink at fighting strep or E. coli. So they all have specialties that are able to work on a particular pathogen. Okay, so let's look at some of these to start out with. The first line of defense, as I said, is our wall, our, our border. This is the physical barrier. So we have a lot of things in place to keep those guys, those pathogens, out of our body. So one of those, of course, is skin. Secretions from the sebaceous and sweat glands are there to basically flush the surface. They contain, huh, guess what again, lysozyme and other bacterial cytal chemicals. They contain at the Earth's acidic um, so the bacteria don't like, like acidic environments, so it keeps it down, or keeps the pH down, keep those guys at bay. Then there's also mucous membranes inside a respiratory tract or digestive tract. There's all kinds of mucous membranes producing mucus to trap organisms. We've got the stomach making hydrochloric acid. We've got enzymes like lysozyme um, to get rid of or kill the bacteria or other pathogens. We've got structures like cilia or hairs in our nasal cavity. Cilia we find in our, in our respiratory passageways to move and bring up any crap that we inhale. But sometimes we have um, things get through those barriers and so disruptions like physical trauma could allow basically in the pathogens in. So, you know, think of a cut or a scrape or a burn would be physical trauma. Um, biochemical alterations would be things like changes in pH or a decrease in enzymes that allow um, bacteria to survive. The second line of defense is the innate immune system or the nonspecific immune system. The cells that are involved in this include the macrophages, neutrophils, dendritic cells which are similar to macrophages but they are found in skin. Mast cells and basophils are another group, um, natural killer cells. Uh, there's chemicals of the innate defense is going to include the cytokines, histamine, and complement. And then we'll also look at the inflammatory response, and which kind of brings all the cells and the chemicals together to have a big army, big battle against whatever pathogen is. And then the last thing we're going to do when we do look at this in the in the next video slides, um, and that's going to be looking at fever as well. So those will go in just kind of an overview of all of them, but like I said, we'll go into a lot more detail on all of these, the second line of defense or the innate immune system 
in the next video lectures. The third line of defense is the adaptive defenses. This is our specific immune response. So we can divide this into two groups. One, our cell-mediated immunity, also called cellular immunity. This is focusing in with T cells or T lymphocytes, they can be called. These are great at fighting viral or parasite infected tissue cells or cancer cells or cells of foreign grafts. So that's their best enemy. They're, they're trained to fight those guys best. The antibody mediated immunity is also called the humoral immunity. These are focusing mostly on our B cells or B lymphocytes, is what they can be called. Um, it does involve a little bit of T cells, which you'll see, but these guys are best at fighting bacteria or bacterial toxins and any free viruses, and that means the virus is not found inside of a cell. So now let's look at some of the properties of, immun of immunity. One is specificity. This is the idea um, that there's a specific dense defense is activated by a specific antigen. Now the antigen I want you to think is a foreign antigen. So this is what I was saying when there's that special group of Navy SEALs that are good at fighting ISIS. Well, this is a special group of T cells and B cells that might be good at fighting one pathogen, but a different group of B cells and T cells for fighting another pathogen. So the immune response targets that antigen and no other other antigens. That group, that little group of Navy SEALs can only fight E. coli. They can't fight staph or strep. So they are just going to completely ignore them. If you've got all three in you, if the one's going to only fight E. coli and let those other Navy SEAL groups fight the other guys. Then there's versatility. Um, this is that the, there's a large diversity of lymphocytes. We got lots of Navy SEALs. Um, and so there's no shortage of having special groups of T cells or B cells to deal with specific pathogens. Um, all this specificity and versatility is due to the receptors on those T and B cells or on the lymphocytes that allow them to bind to those specific pathogens. And so we've got lots of possible receptors and lots so it can have a lot of versatility. Um, and then systematic. That is, it's not restricted to the initial infection site when we get into um, adaptive immunity or not, or specific immunity, you'll see this is a systemic kind of response. It's not just a response to a local cut. You're not going to have B cells and T cells dealing with that. Other properties include memory. Some cells of the adaptive immune response, the B cells, the T cells that are cloned become inactive and their job is to wait around for the next attack. And so they're only activated if you're exposed to an antigen at some future date. And then the other is self-tolerance. We want to make sure we don't have any friendly fire and have some of our own cells killed in the process. So our soldiers are trained to be able to make sure they ignore normal tissues. They ignore self-antigens. They only respond to foreign antigens or, or weird antigens. Okay. Another property of immunity, of course, is what, the idea of immunocompetence. This is the ability of the body to produce normal immune response. Um, that is producing antibodies, produce cell-mediated immunity, that kind of thing, following exposure. So in other words, you get exposed by an antigen or to a, some kind of pathogen, if you are immunocompetent, then your body responds to that by producing antibodies or cell mediated immunity and attacking it. So that means, again, you're immunocompetent. So everything's working correctly. There are cases where we have lack of immunocompetence. This could be immunodeficient, such as a newborn that doesn't have its fully functioning immune system yet, so it has to rely on the mother. Um, to get the antibodies to fight a lot of infections. That's why infants, especially newborns, are susceptible, very susceptible to bacterial and viral infections. There's immunoincompetent. This is, for example, late stages of AIDS where a patient simply doesn't have an immune system working anymore. Its immune system has failed or is failing. And then there's immunocompromise. This is the such case when you have a transplant recipient who's taking medication to reduce um, their immune 
response so that they uh, don't reject the donated organ. So they're compromised in their immune system, but it's only to prevent, you know, losing this donated organ. All right, so the last thing we'll look at then is the lymphatic system and its role. And I just want to give you a quick look at what the lymphatic system is. Here's basically the components of the lymphatic system you can see in the picture here and some of the organs associated with it. The idea is you can see we have a network of lymphatic vessels. All of these lymphatic vessels bring fluids and interstitial fluids from the arms or legs or around the abdomen area back up into circulation up into these little lymph nodes and you can see here's a lymph node here um, and this is where a lot of the macrophages and lymphocytes hang out this is kind of party central for them but they're doing their job in here they're not you know hanging out not doing anything so as stuff comes in as that fluid comes in from the surrounding tissues and even from distant tissues, like all the way from your feet, it's going to draw it all the way up there. It tends to draw in the white blood cells, or excuse me, the um, pathogens. And as it brings in the pathogens, then those white blood cells are right there saying, hey, I'm going to get you. You're done. And it can wipe them out, okay, and get rid of them. So and you can see the concentration of lymph nodes where they are. They've got along in the small intestine in the groin area, armpit, and then in the neck as well. The thymus and spleen, of course, play a role in processing um, the white blood cells. The thymus, you'll see, is for controlling uh, production of T cells. Um, and then, of course, we have more, the adenoid tonsils up here to help kind of protect things that are coming in through our mouth. Okay, so that should end our introduction to the lymphatic system. And so from here, we'll pick up and go into um, the innate defenses.